station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, we hear you loud and clear. How us? Loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, I'm Teresa Moon, the principal here at Lake and Heath High School. We are coming to you from the Royal Air Force Base in Lake and Heath, England. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Our students have put some time into asking you some important questions, and we're just so grateful that you're going to answer them for us today. Thank you for all you do to support us in everything that you're doing out there. Hi, my name is Rod. Could you please demonstrate microgravity by flipping or floating around? You got it, here we go. How's that? I cannot do that on the ground for sure, <laughs> but uh, we can do that very easily up here. Hi, my name is Denasia. When you worked on previous projects, did you ever imagine you'd also be taking that experience to space one day? Yeah, no, it is. It is hard to believe that um, this is is really happening. It's really real, and um, that we are are up here applying everything that we've learned over the past several years and everything that we've done in preparation uh, beforehand. Um, there's certainly lots of um, opportunities and experiences that we've both had leading up to this that that are now uh, very applicable. Um, but certainly for me, when I was doing them, I, I definitely had no idea that this this would be um, one day how it would all end up. Hi, my name is Coslin. Are there a lot of injuries on the International Space Station or is a surgeon needed for monitoring physical health and for emergencies only? Well, that's a great question and thankfully there are not a lot of injuries. We try to keep our astronauts, uh, choose really healthy astronauts um, and keep them healthy on the ground and protect their health uh, on orbit. And so uh, thankfully there are not a lot of emergencies um, or even injuries or illness, but uh, we do train two crew members in each crew to be crew medical officers. And in the case of this crew, uh, my background is emergency medicine. And so um, I'm very grateful not to have to use those that skill set uh, while I'm up here. Uh, we have a small medical kit and we receive training to use those uh, procedures and equipment. Uh, but if we ever had a really significant injury, a severe illness, um, we always have the option of evacuating our crew members back to Earth. Great question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashlyn. What is the importance of space travel today and how do the studies astronauts make help improve our daily lives? It's a great question, Ashlyn, and the, the answer is um, there are a multitude of ways that what we do up here can help affect and benefit uh, the lives of people back on Earth. Um, there's lots of examples that we can, we can talk about. Um, one that we like to talk about is um, our water uh, reclaiming system. So the way that we are able to take the water in that we use up here, that we drink, um, and then we're able to um, restore it uh, so that we can continue to use that water the next day. Um, and that type of technology can be used elsewhere on the earth uh, where clean and uh, abundant water is not available. And so those types of technologies then can be applied in those regions and help uh, provide clean, fresh water. We also um, are doing lots of experiments that use microgravity um, as a, a laboratory environment. It allows us to see things in new ways that we're in ways that we're not able to see them on the ground, particularly when you think about how um, things like cells operate or how flames work. Um, we are able to see it from a new perspective up here, and that enables us to do research in new ways and come up with new solutions that are able to help help us out on 
on the ground. So we're super excited about all the science and technology and research we're able to do up here in this national laboratory. Hi, my name is Aiden. Were there any surprising skills or activities that you had to master that were integral to becoming an astronaut, such as learning a new language or scientific field? Uh, great question. Um, it's kind of a fire hose of learning when you become an astronaut candidate. You're selected into the astronaut office and then um, and begin astronaut training. Uh, we all come from different backgrounds. Uh, Wadi is a geologist by training, I'm um, a physician, and uh, so while we bring a lot of those skills into the job, there are lots, there's lots more to learn. And so we all have to learn spacewalking, uh, robotics, uh, space station systems, uh, and I think one of the more challenging ones for all of us is uh, learning the Russian language because uh, the major two segments of the International Space Station are the U.S. segment and the Russian segment. And so especially for those of us that initially flew on the Soyuz spacecraft, we had to be technically proficient in Russian in order to be um, useful crew members. And uh, I would say that everybody in the job, though, I mean, we are lifelong learners. And uh, so the challenge of learning all of these new areas uh, was one that we were we're eager uh, to undertake and one that we've enjoyed um, not only learning but getting to use what we've learned here on the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Britton. How does being outside the spaceship make you feel? What is it like? Um, we haven't had the opportunity to do a spacewalk during this mission. On my last mission, I got to do two spacewalks, and it is uh, it's, it's almost indescribable, the opportunity to go outside, to be in the spacesuit, which is essentially a miniature spacecraft that sustains us, uh, protects us from the, the, the wild temperature swings and provides oxygen, scrubs, carbon dioxide, um, to be outside of the space station, to see the space station with your own eyes through this, um, this visor that gives you an incredible uh, field of view. It is truly an amazing thing and, uh, and really, uh, a reward for all of the hard work that we invest back on Earth in our spacewalk training. And so I'm, I'm very hopeful that, uh, that Wadi and, and Farmer um, uh, have the opportunity to do that uh, during this mission. Hi, my name is Cadence. Who or what was your main inspiration to want to go to space? That's a good question. And, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, different experiences that have kind of led us down a pathway to the, to this point. Um, for me, I certainly was inspired by my, uh, my family members, my mentors, coaches, um, all kinds of people along the way who helped encourage me uh, to, to find something that I loved and, and to pursue it, um, helped me find opportunities and encouraged me along that path. Um, specifically in terms of kind of heroes that I looked up to. Um, for me, certainly Sally Ride and, and Mae Jemison um, were two figures for me that, that kind of uh, paved that way. Um, but I certainly, you know, think that there is, we have a lot to learn from, from all the people that we interact with. And, and even in the training process, we've learned so much from our instructors back at um, NASA Johnson Space Center. Um, so just kind of putting, putting together all of those things that we've learned from all the different people along the way has enabled us to be here today. Hi, my name is Rebecca. What experience, training, or course would you say prepared you most to go to space? Boy, I, you know, I don't think there's any one training course field of study that prepares you to go to space. I think, you know, we all agree that um, we pursued things that were interesting to us, things that we wanted to to invest our time and efforts into for a career. For me, that was medicine. Um, it was such a privilege to serve as an emergency medicine doctor, and I know the same is for, uh, for Wadi, the, the practice of geology and, and using those, um, that education, those skills to, to look at Mars. And those happened to be things that, uh, that were attractive to the astronaut office. Um, and so I think our advice to everyone that is interested in someday doing this is pursue what you love, pursue what you're interested in. Um, you will 
if you work hard at those, you're going to rise to the top, and and uh, and and someday you, you might have the opportunity, the incredible opportunity, to do something like this. Hi, my name is Steven. What is your favorite food you get to have on the space station, and how do you make it? So I'm glad you asked. Here we have shrimp fried rice. So this is what the shrimp fried rice looks like when you first get it out of the package. It is all nice and dehydrated and uh, delicious looking. And then when you put some water in there, hot water, let it soak for a little while. Now you've got something that's actually starting to look like shrimp fried rice. And so we'll just uh, cut open this bag and, and eat it right out of here with a spoon. So that gives you an idea of some of the, the foods that uh, we get to enjoy up here. And our foods come looking like this. So the, that dehydrated food comes in a white packet, kind of like this. So we've got to, oops, we've got to read what it, uh, what it says. And then some of our food comes in these kind of greenish envelopes. Um, this is chocolate pudding, and uh, and so it it is prepared and then either irradiated or heat treated to to kill off the bacteria, which makes it very shelf stable. And uh, for those of you who have uh, parents um, that have eaten MREs, you've probably seen MREs. Our food is very very similar to to MRE food. And then our drinks come in these kind of aluminized pouches, kind of like a, a Capri Sun. It's got a uh, drink mix down at the bottom. We add water to this, either hot or cold, depending on the drink. So um, for coffee, it's going to be hot water. For this, it's just going to be the cool water. And you shake it up, and then you use a straw to drink it. And uh, we've got a lot of variety of food, and, and uh, we're grateful for the work that the food lab has put into to giving us a, a diverse and, and healthful menu. Hi, my name's Carly. What's one of your favorite memories from becoming an astronaut? Uh, well, certainly the I will never forget the the day that I got the phone call, um, the the day that um, I I yeah received the phone call that, that accepting me to the astronaut corps. Um, was definitely not expecting that um, in the least. I had little notes wrote written down um, to for what I was going to say on that phone call, but I had no notes written for um, if if I got the yes. So I was certainly very surprised. Um, but one of my greatest memories about the process of being selected and, and going through the kind of initial training was getting to do it with my classmates. Uh, so there were uh, 13 of us total, 11 uh, American astronauts and two Canadian astronauts um, that we were, were selected together and went through training together. Um, and we all just got really close, got to know each other, know our, our strengths and weaknesses, um, and really came together as a group. And so now it's a, a true privilege to be able to fly with one of my classmates. Uh, Bob Hines, farmer, um, is up here with me. And so it's, it's just a, a joy to be able to do that. Hi, my name is Zephaniah. My question to you is, in your opinion, what is the most interesting thing you've seen or done while you're in space? Well, there's so many cool things uh, to see and do up here. Seeing the Earth um, constantly changing in different lights with uh, different um, phases of the moon, uh, different weather patterns. I think that that is uh, most one of the most amazing things in terms of things that we've done. I have to say, you know, going through the launch process and then having this experience of getting to l truly l um, experience what it means to live and work in space, to adapt to this environment and do that on a daily basis, and to be a part of this amazing team that is accomplishing important science uh, um, to extend our presence in the solar system and to make life better back uh, back on Earth. Hi, my name is Austin. Can you play video games in space, or are there other ways you prefer to entertain yourselves? Well, we don't have an Xbox or anything like that up here, uh, but we do um, have robotics. Um, and so with um, the robotics process, we have a, a hand controller 
Not sure if you can see back here, but we have a uh, hand controller that we can operate um, a robotic arm outside of the space station. So that certainly feels like playing video games sometimes. And I think the, one of the other things that we really like to do is take pictures back of the Earth. And here we've got a whole bunch of cameras here and more in the back. And th this is just such a great place to take to, to visualize and then also to, to share the experience with uh, family and friends back home. Hi, my name is Autumn and I'm wondering what aspect about space surprised you the most? You know, for me, I think it is the um, the, the process of, of adapting to weightlessness. The fact that you get up here and almost immediately, you know, being to the floating is new and crazy and something that we're not uh, familiar with. And the fact that our brains adapt to that so quickly and on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, floating around just seems like a normal thing. It doesn't occur to you to walk up here um, that, that floating becomes normal is just, I think, uh, super interesting and, and uh, one of my favorite things. Hi, my name is Cayman. What is your favorite zero gravity related activity on the space station? I think my answer to that would just be floating around all day, every day, um, getting to literally climb on the walls like Spider-Man um, and not even think about it, as, as Chell was mentioning. Um, it's just pretty, pretty amazing. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves how amazing it is because it becomes so natural. Hi, my name is Caleb. Do you conduct any experiments on the space station? Yeah, this is an orbiting national laboratory, international laboratory, and it gives us the opportunity to study um, a whole range of science from uh, combustion science, fluid dynamics, um, physiological uh, and medical science, and, uh, and, and so one of the things that I'm working on right now is a, is a a project called um, X Roots, and so we're looking at uh, growing plants in space. I got to do that during my last mission, and instead, of, and that last time we grew the plants in pillows of soil, and this time we're looking at hydroponics and aeroponics uh, to allow a, a denser growth of and more sustainable growth of plants um, that could be used for long duration space flight as a source of food and maybe something to participate in the environmental control system where it is uh, where the plants are actually consuming carbon dioxide and, and producing oxygen. And so it's a very exciting project to be a part of and one of 200 to 300 different projects that are ongoing on the space station right now. And I think that that is uh, the, let's see, do we have more questions? Oh, we do. And I think we're running out of a little bit of time. I just wanted to take a moment uh, to um, say how uh, excited I am to get to talk with you all at Lake and Heath and, and the DOD schools. Um, I was in class of 91 at Lake and Heath. I uh, did seventh and eighth grade at, uh, at Feltwell. We lived on Feltwell and I went to the, um, uh, middle school there and then did my freshman year at Lake and Heath and so grateful for the um, investment of the teachers and instructors and coaches and mentors there at Lake and Heath. You all um, have top-notch uh, people that are invested in you and your success and uh, and so um, I know that there are sacrifices uh, made by you and your families living overseas. I just hope that you are enjoying the experience and, and it is something that is, uh, is just I reflect on being really one of the favorite uh, favorite parts of, of um, growing up, being there at uh, being there at Lake and Heath and felt well in Milton Hall. Um, I brought a couple of things with me that I just wanted to share with you. Uh, can you grab those two up? The first one is I, I'm hoping that I'm talking to you all, many of you right now, but this is a class picture of the class of uh, 2022. Some of you got to sign that. And those F1, that F111 on a stick there, that's what was flying back uh, when I was at Lake and Heath. And then um, just a couple of other things that I got to bring up here with me, uh, a patch. And then also I was a part of the ROT, junior ROTC um, while I was there. And so just a couple of tokens that I'm of uh, appreciation that I'm excited to, to bring back um, and give back to you all when, uh, when I return. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. I think we're about uh, out of time. I'm sorry we didn't get to the, the last few questions. Um, but uh, happy to take any other comments or questions now. Hello, I'm Les Ingram. 
I'm the aerospace science instructor for Lake and Heath High School. On behalf of Lake and Heath High School and the entire Lake and Heath greater community, we would like to express our profound gratitude to everyone at NASA and the entire crew of Expedition 67 for this unique opportunity. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Station Houston on Space Ground 2, thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>